Let's now tackle the eyelids. We want all those little bones to slide along the eyeball in a synchronized way. But the first step will be to correct the weight painting. The results of the automatic weight painting aren't horrendous. But in my experience, eyelids always need some correction. Start by closing the eyelids. Be sure modifiers such as corrective smooth, multiers or subdivision surface are turned off so they don't interfere. If you've hidden them, bring back the deformation bone for the rest of the face. We don't want any weight from the eyelids outside of the eye socket area. The goal is to balance and blend the weights so that the eyelid topology looks smooth. I'm pretty sure a crooked deformation isn't a huge deal in this case, but I think it's still good practice to clean it up. It also helps to reduce weird stretching in the textures when closing the eyelids. Making sure the two edge loops at the eyelid border stay as close to each other as possible also helps keep the eyelid border sharp and the texture unstretched. You need to mix weight from the eyelid's bones and the eye socket bones. It works like a gradient. The highest eyelid edge loops should receive more weight from the eye socket bones, and the lowest ones should have more weight from the eyelid bones. Just play with the weights until the edge loops have a nice enough curvature. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not a problem if the eyeball pokes out. Usually, I solve this issue with a corrective shape key rather than fighting with the weights. I've already done a rigging tuto for the eyes so I'm not going to redo one here. But we do need at least one deformation bone and one controller for the eyeball, as the eyelids need to follow it. Here, I'm placing the cursor at the center of the eyeball, so I can snap the future eyeball bone to it. You can just duplicate an eyelid bone and snap it to the cursor. The tail of the bone can be snapped to the center of the pupil. You can recalculate its role on the global plus Z axis. It should be parented to the head bone. You can duplicate it to create the controller. Bring the controller forward on the y-axis. It needs to stay aligned with the eye bone. Here, I noticed the origin point of the bone was inverted, so I flip it around. It's because it came from a duplicate of an eyelid bone, and those ones are pointing backward. I also flip the eye bone using Alt-F. It should have been done right away, but I forgot. Using Alt-F breaks the parenting, so it needs to be reparented to the head. Basically, the head of the eye bone should be at the center of the eyeball. It's important for the damped track constraint we're going to add. So in pose mode, add a damped track to the eye bone, targeting its controller. I want the eyeballs to actually move. For this tutor's rig, they just need two vertex groups with the same names as the eye bones, one per side, and to be parented to the rig using the armature deform option. Don't forget to give a name to these new eye bones, disable deform for the controllers, and symmetrize them. We want the eyelid bones to slightly slide along when the eye moves. I learned the technique I'm using to achieve that from P2Design's first rigging course a while ago. Start by duplicating the eye bone, and put it in a new collection. It'll be the first layer of mechanism bones. For a better organization, separate the eye bones into a new collection. Next, duplicate the mechanism bone multiple times. You need one duplicate per eyelid bone. You can snap their tail to their corresponding eyelid bone's head using snapping to vertices. Make sure their Z axis points up by recalculating their role on the global plus Z axis. Disable deform for them and batch rename them. They should be parented to the head.
Next, duplicate the eyelid bones. I prefer to flip the duplicates around, but I'm pretty sure it's not a big deal to leave them like that. These will be the tweaker bones. The mechanism bones will track those tweakers, and the eyelid bones will follow along as children. Give those tweakers a new name, and their own collection. And of course, disable deform for them too. Before I forget, let's parent the eyelid deformation bones to their corresponding mechanism bone. If you get this when going back to pose mode, it's because the mechanism bones still have the eye bones damped track constraint on them. You just need to remove it. We do want the mechanism bones to have a damped track constraint, but we want it to target their respective tweaker instead. So let's do just that. The mechanism bones will rotate when moving the tweakers and thus effortlessly slide the eyelid bones along the eyeball. Next, duplicate the tweakers twice. I'll give them different colors to make it easier to follow. Let's put the red set in a new collection. Those ones will be tracking the eye bone. Put the second set into yet another collection. Those will be intermediary bones. They'll transfer a bit of the red bones movement over to the tweakers. I'll color those green. Rename the red bones to something relevant and parent them to the eye bone. The green bones should be parented to the head. Let's give them a copy transform constraint, targeting their corresponding red bone. When that's done, select all the green bone and hold out while lowering the influence. A value of 0 0.250 is usually good, but you can adapt it to your preferences. Finally, parent the tweakers to their respective green bone. That way, they'll receive some of the red bone's movements and you'll still be able to manually move them without fighting with the copy transform constraints. Play with the constraints influence if you feel like the eyelids don't follow the eye enough or move too much. Let's symmetrize the rig.
Now that this is done, let's create controllers to pose the eyelids more easily. Duplicate the eye controller twice and place them in front of each eyelid. Rename them. There are quite a few eye expressions you can do with just those two controllers. For this tutorial, I'm just going to make the two most basic ones, blinking and raising the bottom lid. All the eye expressions use the same technique. To help you make more, I'll put a link to a website referencing facial expressions in the description. Here, I only want the controllers to move up and down, so I lock every channels but their set location axis. Let's start with the blinking. You can create the pose using the tweakers. Here, I hide the bottom tweakers first so they don't get in the way. I also enable multiers, corrective smooth, and any other modifier that alters the final result. Otherwise, you get bad surprises when you turn them on much later. In the case of humanoid characters, the top eyelid goes all the way down to close the eye, and the bottom one barely moves. Since I'm not going for a realistic style, I don't use the bottom eyelid bones at all. If you do choose to use your bottom tweakers, you can treat them the same way as the top ones. When you are happy the pose, add a transformation constraint to one of the tweakers, targeting the top controller. It needs to be set to local space. We want the eyes to blink when the top controller goes down. To make things easier, I like to choose where the controller should end up when fully blinking before entering anything in the constraint. Since the controller goes down, it would make more sense if the value is negative. So in edit mode, I recalculate the role of both controllers on the global plus Z axis, which I should have done when creating the bone anyway. In this case, I'll settle for a value of minus 0.015 meters. Using multiples of 10 or 5 makes it easier to deal with drivers later. Then, in the constraint, let's enter that same value as the map from location. Since it's a negative, it can go into the minimum Z axis slot. We only care about the controller Z axis, but the tweakers are using all three of their axes so we need to change the source axis in the map to panel to Z. Let's duplicate the constraint to all of the other post tweakers. I also give a name to the constraint to avoid confusion later, as every new expression will use a transformation constraint. It's now time to copy and paste the location values of the tweakers into the map to values of the constraint. Since the map from value is a minimum, the location values need to be pasted as minimums as well. If everything works correctly, the tweakers should move further down. I find that resetting their location at the end makes it less confusing. When resetting their location, you should get your normal blink post back. Another technique to achieve this would be to use an action constraint instead of transformation. But I find transformation simpler to use, and eyelids have a pretty linear type of movement, so it's perfect in that case. Now, let's apply the same method to raise the bottom lid, using the bottom controller this time. Since the controller goes up, the map from value will be positive, so a max value this time. Positive and negative don't always equal to maximum and minimum, but in the case where one of those stays at zero, they pretty much do. When you're happy with your setup, you can symmetrize the rig once more. Unlike me, don't forget to make sure all of the eyelid bones are visible before doing so.
Now that this is done, let's check the results without the modifiers on. Eyeball sticking out is barely noticeable and won't appear in the renders, but it bothers me regardless. And since it's a common issue, especially with big eyes, let's fix it. In my case, corrective smooth is the culprit, but sometimes there is no culprit. Sometimes there is much more eyeball visible. Sometimes it pokes out even with multiers or sub -defon. To cover all the situations, let's fix it with corrective shaped keys. Let's add a basis and a new one. I find it easier to do both eyes in one key and separate them afterward. Let's give this eyelid a nice bump. Don't forget to turn on symmetry and turn of modifiers. Then ray enable the modifiers one by one to check. When you're happy with the shape, you can duplicate the key. In edit mode, you can use the blend from shape option in the vertex menu to remove vertices from the shape keys simply by turning off add in the operator menu. That way, you can remove the left eye vertices from one shape key and the right ones from the other. Just make sure that X-ray is enabled and symmetry is turned off to avoid problems. The last step will be to add drivers to those keys. You'll want to choose the top controller as the target, specifically its set location in local space. Let's pose the controller before tackling the expression. Enter the value you had previously chosen. We want to multiply our variable by whatever number gives us 1 as a result. Since I'm not a math person, I tend to do trial and error until I find a good number. My variable is a multiple of 5, so it makes it much easier. It's also a negative, so I know my number needs to be a negative 2 for the result to be positive. It doesn't matter if the result is a little bit more than 1, as long as it isn't less than 1. You can now copy and paste the driver to the other shape key. All you need to do is swap the left controller for the right one in the driver editor. And that's it for this eyelid rig. You can check my other rigging tutorials to tackle the other challenging parts of the face and reuse the techniques to rig the rest. I don't plan to make a tutorial about the rest as it really follows the same method, so I'll quickly cover it here. The full facial deformation layer roughly follows the main facial muscles. It can be adapted to the level of details you want, to your character's anatomy and topology. It's usually made of bendy bones unless the area is rigid, like the cheekbone for example. The bendy bones are all linked together with tweaker bones that act as parents or stretch to constraints and handles, as seen in this tutorial. The tweakers can then be parented or controlled by controllers. I use the transformation constraint a lot to make expression controls such as raising the cheek, smiling, making a snarl, etc. And that's it really. Of course, you can always enhance it with shape keys, lattices, etc. I use the facial expressions reference website a lot to decide which controller I need or want. I hope that you found this video useful. Cheers.